actors in the law enforcement and military communities in conversations that we all know we need to have. All opinions you'll hear are our own, are protected by our First Amendment of the United States Constitution, and in no way reflect or are meant to reflect the opinion of any specific agency, officer, or service member. Some opinions may be controversial. Listener discretion is advised. Enjoy. Hi, Iman. Hello, Pete. What's going on? Ah, uh, you know, uh, just dealing with the day. <sighs> what the fuck are you wearing? <laughs> Gasp! Gasp Inc. Yes. What the fuck is Gasp? Uh, it's a bodybuilding, powerlifting company, shirt company, so I just like How, their shirt. How's your gasp? I actually like it because it makes me seem so much bigger <laughs> than I actually am. <laughs> Why are you puffing your chest out, know, man? Right? <laughs> Guys, Project Sapient. We got to thank everybody, all of our supporters, HavocJournal.com, GymJunkies.com, VectorShields.com, LiveBoston617.org, WellnessForWarriors.live. We love all of you. Thank you so much for everything, yeah. guys, for supporting yeah. us. We're in probably like, what, four or 5,000 listeners already? Oh, my God, yeah. It's amazing. It is amazing, I dude. Mean, w- what, we've only been up for a couple months and yeah. just, damn. Yeah, and we're reaching people all over the world. I mean, it's it's just badass. Thank you, everybody, for everything you do. Oh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Oh, yes. YouTube. Project uh, Sapiens. We are on all the platforms. Yep. Uh, just subscribe. Please spread the word. Get the message out there. Yep. So. All right. So let's go into so article. Today, today, uh, today's article. So we're, we're kind of kind of going to switch a little gears, right? We, we always do law enforcement and warrior mindset type stuff and whatever. But um, I figured this week we will talk... Um, One of my articles I wrote about um, is me being a uh, Middle Eastern veteran and my welcome to what we affectionately called as Mortar City and to my squad, the Praetorians. So this is an article on Havoc Journal. Yes. Again, Havoc Journal is awesome. We love you guys. Thank you so much for everything you've been doing for us. Yes. Um, The article is named Middle Eastern Veterans Welcome to Mortar City and the Praetorians. Yeah. Who's this handsome devil right here? Dude, that's young me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That was, that was me I th- at 20, 40, 23, 24 years old, man. Oh, my God. That was the young me. And this is in Iraq. This is in Iraq. Who's this little dude? That little dude uh, came up to me, and when I opened my mouth and spoke Arabic, he became my best friend. <laughs> and I think, if I remember correctly, I gave him... Oreos or some that, sort of that snack. looks like an Oreo package. Yeah, in there. yeah. I mean, the fat guy in me sees the blue, and I'm like, dude, that <laughs> is Oreos all day long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. What the fuck is that picture in the background? See these three dudes here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the picture in the background? All right, you're not. You're never gonna believe this. So, get a mission. We get the a mission. We had to go. Um, I gotta look at it closely. Yeah, we had to go to the French embassy. Uh, in Baghdad for um, you know commanders meeting or whatever, so we went down there. Um, yeah. we were uh, part of the security detail who sur- you know surrounded and 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 uh, helped out with securing the area. That right there, my friend, we find out is the Arnold Schwarzenegger gym of Baghdad. What? Yeah, like the Arnold Schwarzenegger gym of Baghdad. That's what it was called. And, was there dudes uh, working out? Oh my god, yeah, and and savages, and, dude. What I loved about it is it was so old school. They had equipment maybe from the 50s, and, dude, it was awesome. Dude, hey, and, and whatever works. Like, Well, literally, like, you've seen those old uh, videos of Arnold Schwarzenegger working out yeah. in, in Venice and, and you know, at a Gold's Gym and all that shit. Yeah. Dude, it looked just like that. Really? And I'm like, uh, and I met a, a, a uh, and uh, so I met the owner of the gym. He, he's an old school bodybuilder. Um you know, and you can tell very well built, but you know he's old and 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 he's uh, training uh, this Iraqi guy uh, for bodybuilding to get into like the world competition type thing. And this dude was built like a freaking brick house while this whole fucking war is going on. Yeah, these motherfuckers are training. Yeah, that's commitment, dude. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, dude, that gym was packed. That's fucking commitment. And what's funny is uh, when we when we went in there, we I actually had to check it out. I'm like, dude, let's go in there. So it was like five of us, five U.S. soldiers. We go into the gym just to check it out. Right. But, you know, again, like thinking about it now, I'm like, dude, you had a bunch of frigging U.S. soldiers all battle 
battle fucking rattle and everything, and yeah. we're walking in there with our M4s and 203s and F249s. And just dudes lifting away, whatever. fucking. You know, dudes lifting away, and, and um, a- again, I have so many pictures, but I could not find a picture of, of me inside the gym. We took a picture with the owner and all that. Oh, and it, dude. Was, it was pretty cool, but one of these days, I'll, I'll find it and I'll if, send it to you. If you can find it, we're going to post the shit out of it. Right? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get it out there to you guys so you guys can check it out. That's badass, bro. All right, so yeah. talk to me. Talk to me about... So, we're this, on page two. Yeah, so this is one of the first articles I've written for Havoc Journal. Um, okay. So May 14, 2020. All right. Uh, so, again, one of the very first articles I've written. And, uh, you know, it, it reminds me, um, you know, it, 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 so it goes off right at the beginning. I talk about what it was like going to Camp Anaconda, which was affectionately called Mortar City. Yeah. Because it was getting mortar, mortars all the time hitting that base. It, it's a very large base, you know, mortars all the time. It's in the middle of a, of a city. I believe, if my memory served me right, Ramadi, like the Ramadi okay. area. So it's, it's, it's a, you know, city area. And Don't mind me, I'm having my Greek coffee while it, we're talking. Well, it's just, you're good. Co- okay, I liquid cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> so I, uh, so we, we uh, now, the way we landed. I will never forget this. So we leave Kuwait in a, in a C-130, take off. We're getting ready, you know, to land in Baghdad. And uh, not Baghdad, sorry, Camp Anaconda. Yeah. And um, they had to do what they call a combat drop. Oh. That was the only way they can land without getting shot at yeah. or shot down. Yeah. Uh, so you think C-130, very large plane, right, has our company in there. Um, and... So basically what a combat drop is, is that the plane starts at whatever height, we'll say 10,000 feet or whatever. Yep. Um, and what they do is to land, they corkscrew their way, like right. as a crash landing yeah. to land the plane safely. And during that flight to uh, from Kuwait to Camp Anaconda, I forget, it, it was probably a couple hours, maybe even less. But uh, I fell asleep because it was in the middle of the night. Yeah, and you can you you get as much sleep as you possibly can exactly. whenever you, know, you can, pretty much. Right. And so I was asleep, and I wake up to this combat drop. Now I thought we were crash landing, <laughs> <laughs> so you're panicking. So I wake up, Fuck. And I'm like, holy shit! Here it comes. And 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 one of the guys like like no no they're doing the combat drop. I'm like Jesus, thanks for fucking waking me up <laughs> before they did it. You know, so we land, and I'm like, holy shit, yet. You know, some people had the, the throw-up bags and throw one up in there because... I'm, I'm not laughing at you no, guys. No, no, I know. It's just, it's, it's, it, right. I mean, I'm just kind of developing the scene for everybody to be like, yep. what a shit show that was landing into Anaconda, but that's the only way you can land into that base right. at the time. Uh, this was back in uh, 05 when I got there, uh, January of 2005 is when we landed into uh, Camp Anaconda. Dude, right in the thick of it, man. Jesus yeah, Christ. yeah, it was the Wild West in, in 05, dude. So um, so we make our way off the off the plane, off the C-130, and we head towards a briefing, a uh, large briefing tent slash area, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the military gave us these cards where we check in. So we scan in. Now we're checked into war. We're here. You know, it's kind of like kind of like checking into Ding. your room for the hotel. Yeah. You know, you're like, ching, all right, Can I'm I help here. you with your bags, sir? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so we check in and we sit down. And uh, the Sergeant First Class, uh, an E7, uh, was uh, greeted us uh, as once we sat down. And he yells out, welcome to Camp Anaconda, otherwise known as Mortar City. Fuck. As he continued to uh, brief us on in-processing procedures, billeting, like where we're going to be sleeping temporarily, um, process in and all that stuff. Um, we process in, we get to our temporary housing, which is basically a bunch of tents and cots. Yeah. So that's what we call tent city. E- excellent accommodations. Well, yeah. you know, it's the army. But do yeah. That. <laughs> you just went through a flight from fucking hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we're sleeping, you know. Here's and, your cot. Yeah. Welcome to much, war. Pretty much. And, uh, and you know, slowly I, I drifted off to sleep because, dude, I'm, I was fucking, it was like, you know, yeah. probably two, three in the morning. We had a long day the next day just to, you know, uh, in process and all kinds of shit. Yeah. So all of a sudden I wake up to 
boom, boom, boom. The mortars Fucking are going Fucking mortars off. coming. Yeah, oh, yeah, raining down. I woke up to sound oh, explosions. Shit. Air sirens were going off. The base was under attack by uh, mortars. And uh, my tent mates and I rushed out of our tents to the bunkers. You know, yep. we had all the... Bu- actually, recently, um, uh, the base uh, got hit, actually. I don't know if it's the same one in Iraq. I saw a news story it. was just on the it. news? It was just on the news. They got hit by rockets. And uh, and they went ran to these bunkers. So oh, shit. I don't know what the bunkers are like now versus what they were back then back then man it was like one big concrete block right and really that's in a bunch of sandbags so i don't know what they look like now so you know as we stood there huddled together which i mean we realized that if a mortar hit us head on we'd be dead anyways i mean it was kind of one of those false sense of security you know <laughs> you're like okay and you know kind of reality hit us right away i'm like all right well we're here you know what? I, I'm cutting you off, but yep. what amazes me about even the first few parts of your article here yep. is that this was 16 years ago. Yeah. And you're, this was your first time in Iraq? First time, yep. You, you like, remember the minute details. Yeah, I, I mean, th- there are things, uh, you know, I always talk to my uh, fellow squad mates and, and other guys that have uh, deployed to war, uh, whether yeah. it was Afghanistan, Iraq, even even the old timers from Desert Storm, uh, Bosnia, stuff like, you know, even peacekeeping missions. Sure. Um, they will remember the most minute, the most minute shit. Because to us, even to this day, sixteen years later, it was like as if it was yesterday. I still right. remember, shit, right? You know, like so, so yeah. I mean, that's that's part of the. Uh, well, it's 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 awesome that you remember it, but it's also awesome that you you can share it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I've gotten a, a point in my, I guess, if you want to call it recovery or whatever. Um, yeah. Writing about it is also therapeutic in a yeah. way, you know. So well, I well I can kind of see that with how you're kind of going down the line of things. Yeah, it's like I don't want to say you're letting it go, but you're getting into it deeply. Yeah, and you're explaining it to people like me who had never seen this. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I'm getting I don't want to say an accurate picture, but I'm getting a, a, a picture of what's going on here. Yeah, I mean, I mean that, and that's the thing. And, and if you, re- I know you read a lot in Havoc Journal. A yeah. lot of the veterans there, pretty much like same thing. Whatever their experiences were, whether it was Rangers, Special Forces, sure. whatever battle they were in, Mogadishu, even. I mean, you can you, they go right down, and they you can almost picture it in your head, you know. So that's yeah. what I kind of want to give the reader, the non-veteran, even the veterans, like. You know, it's nice to see that we're all in it together. Like Everybody's whatever, in it together. Exactly. Everybody's sharing. Whatever we're struggling with, whatever yeah. whatever issues we got going on. And, and let me bring all. it back. I'm cutting you off, but yeah, yeah, for yeah. good reason. Let me bring it back to our friends at, at uh, wellnessforwarriors.live. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Because anybody listening, any kind of issues, we've, we've been talking to them. They're amazing human beings. And they've helped out a lot of people even since we, I think we aired their show maybe three weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. And and, and uh, since then. Since then, it's been a bunch. Yeah. I mean, my last conversation so, with uh, Megan Kelly, one of the directors, told me six six people reached out to them after our episode. Dude, that's huge. So, I mean, it's it's amazing, you know. That's uh, huge. Reach out, uh, you know, veterans, law enforcement, uh, first responders, reach out. Right. I mean, uh, they'll, they'll do what they can. And it's and a free service. It's a free service. And not only is it, fr- like, if you don't want to contact, Contact them, contact us. We'll get you into, the, you know, talking to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there's no, there's, n- like, nothing to worry about. No, absolutely not. And they get it. They get it. They, and and they, and what, they get it, and what they do, they don't have to. Exactly. So, exactly. all right, back to the article. All right. So, a few days later, um, we... Uh, convoy of Humvees, uh, otherwise we call them as gun trucks, yep. uh, with uh, 50 cal mount, 50 cal uh, machine guns, um, the Ma Deuce, affectionately called by us guys. The Deuce. The Deuce. Um, uh, arrived to pick us up. Uh, so it took several convoys to get us to our, uh, what we call as a forward operating base, yep. or, or FOB, uh, in other words. So... As we travel along the road, um, I saw different areas where IEDs, uh, improvised explosive devices, had exploded. Uh, I could hear pockets of gunfire at every point of the convoy, you know, just different directions. Like, you know, y- you remember, th- I remember these things. I remember the dust in my face as yeah. we're, you know, navigating our way to base. Ba- my base, if I remember, it was about an hour drive uh, from Anaconda. What a harrowing fucking experience, dude. Yeah, um, it <laughs> so it it got to the point where you know we got so used to it. It like dude, the friggin' Camp Anaconda was a massive base that had an Olympic sized swimming pool. Right. 
and we would find reasons to go to Camp Anaconda <laughs> just so we can hit their pool. <laughs> as as fucked up as that might sound, oh fuck it. <laughs> but it's Why is like, that fucked up? It's like, hey guys, uh, yeah, let's go to this one village right here, and we're gonna need to refuel. So let's yeah. go to Camp Anaconda and bring your swim trunks. It's the fucking <laughs> Roger that. It's the most <laughs> intel village fucking in all of Iraq. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so I mean, fellow veterans. I mean, you know, I talked to a lot of them, and and uh, and they will. Uh, you, Every single one of them has a certain story like that. <laughs> like they will come up with certain missions. Like so, so it's like you know, I've got a lot of friends of mine that lived off MREs and stuff like that. Same thing, like like yeah. with us and and these big bases because they house you know generals and whatnot. They're they, gonna have a lot better oh, stuff. They have food, man. They they got all kinds of shit. So McDonald's. Dude, you're not kidding. I know. Burger King, uh, <laughs> TCBY, the ice cream place. Yeah. They had a movie theater. They had the Olympic size swimming pool. <laughs> Um, I got a funny story about Burger King, actually. Generals need the fucking... Oh, yeah. Hey, TC. so when I was over there, uh, King Kong came out, the movie, right? Yeah. Um, uh, and Burger King came out with the King Kong Burger. That okay. Triple, okay. That triple-decker, freaking massive Massive, thing. glorious fucking so burger, we, if you ask know, me. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, we uh, we go, uh, you know, we had a uh, supply convoy to uh, to do and, and uh, provide security for supplies. Head down there. So while the supply sergeants and stuff doing their thing, I go over to the Burger King because I'm like, dude, I am annihilating I, yeah. that thing. Yeah. So I order the King Kong burger with the King Kong fries and the King Kong Coke, <laughs> you know, and it's like, dude, I ate and now at 115 degrees, 20 degrees, wearing 60 pounds of gear. And driving back, <laughs> dude, I got so sick. <laughs> it, I got, dude, it was bad. I'm like, oh. Pull over, pull over, pull over. Code Brown coming soon. <laughs> we need to step it up. <laughs> so so anyways, let me, uh, I digress. Let me get back there because I got like so many of these types <laughs> of silly shit that we've done. But uh, all right, so we finally get to the fob, and we settle down in our tents. Each soldier was able to get some sort of mattress for their cause. So the way you got we, a mattress, well, yeah, a cushion, cushion. we'll call it yeah, mattress. So, and the way we were able to do that is we had to basically uh, acquire those things at empty tents that weren't being used yet. <laughs> So we had to go and grab supplies from previous units and whatever yeah. and just take their freaking mattresses. God only knows if they have bed bugs, whatever. We didn't care. We just freaking grab whatever. Right, right. You know, and um, and we set up our AOs, uh, our, well, our AOs, our, our sleeping quarters, um, and we built makeshift walls for privacy. Uh, each, ha each tent housed anywhere from 10 to 15 soldiers. And here's my favorite part. Our, some of our tents... Um, were made, uh, were coated or made, uh, if I remember correctly, something about kerosene or something like that because we had to do a fire brief on them because of how fast they lit up. Really? Fire, yeah. So I'm like, wow, I'm in the death trap now. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I'm yeah. like, perfect. Okay. War zone, death trap. Yep. My stomach just went to shit. Yep. <laughs> yep. And, then, and, then, and then not just that, also the wildlife we had to watch out for. Oh. Camel spiders, sand vipers. Um, <laughs> I'll forget one of my one of my uh, buddies, good friend of mine. After the briefing, um, you know where we learned about the wildlife and all that shit. One of the soldiers had this freaking RC <laughs> racer, yeah, and he was freaking. It was like zooming around, you know, the area, <laughs> our area, and everything. Dust was kicking up everywhere. I remember I'm surprised my, nobody shot it. <laughs> I remember my well, he grabbed me. He's like, dude, look at that. Look at that. I'm like, what? What? And he, that right there. I'm looking at it. I'm like, what, that RC thing? He's like, oh, I thought it was like a desert rodent or something, dude. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you are, you it was part of the wildlife? Out? are you that freaked out? Are you that freaked out after that <laughs> briefing? He's like, dude, <laughs> I don't want to see any of that shit. I'm like, all right, great. So we're at war. We got to worry about the wildlife. We got to worry about these fucking death trap tents. And we got to be careful how much we eat because... We could shit our pants at any moment <laughs> during a, during a friggin' patrol. Oh, and don't forget the mortars. <laughs> oh, and the mortars. So, so we, we so anyways, uh, let me get back into this. So, so uh, the company was given its mission. My company was given its mission for for the year. You know, we we met with the uh, brigade, com um, sorry, battalion commander. Um, really, really 
close friend of mine. Um, now, you know, we're, we're like brothers, you know, we're yep. intertwined, really, really great guy. Um, so, uh, the reason why the battalion ended up plucking me from my company to work directly for the battalion commander is because of Man, the, I could, uh, I could have gone somewhere with this, but uh, uh, I'm uh, not, I'm uh, choosing the high road. Just say it. No, no, Get it just out go. Of you because you're gonna, you're gonna be. You're gonna you're gonna hold it. <laughs> Just oh, you got chosen, all right. Oh, anyway, go on. Oh, I go see. On. <laughs> Listen, there were no knee pads. All right. <laughs> oh, where's your picture? Raw. Are you wearing knee pads? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, was I? I don't Actually, you, you might want to look. I, I don't know uh, where is it. No, oh, I wasn't. Oh, no, <laughs> fuck. All right, all right. Ruined Anyways. my joke. Anyway. All right, so the battalion commander picked Iman. Yeah, anyway, so 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 be prior to him picking me, um so we we go to this um to the to the French embassy and all that and uh the Iraqi army uh were one of the units that was securing the French embassy and we dismounted, and the squad, my squad leader asked for my help to translate. He said, hey, I'm in, come over here. Can you talk to these guys? I'm like, sure. So I, I dismounted from the gun truck, and I started talking to the Iraqis. And at first, they were confused. Who the fuck is this? Well, it didn't register to them yeah. that an American soldier that spoke Arabic. So it, it kind of threw me off a little, too, and it, it, it kind of all of a sudden, they, my whole squad looked at me. <laughs> and my squad leader, I mean, you know, we were shaking hands. They gave us bottled water. They gave us juice. They you're, gave us. You're the asset. Now. Yeah. So, so right away, yeah. he, you know, my 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 um, my commander. Well, my uh, squad leader looks at me, sergeant. He said, "You're you're an asset." Oh, really? Yeah. He he said that, dude. Uh, well, think about it, right? So, it, there was a lot of translators mm -hmm. over there, but there weren't as many as you that no. were actual soldiers. Yeah. That could interact. So there was, with the translators, I'm sure there was a point that that things were getting lost in translation. Right? That and trust. And trust. Trust is a huge one. A lot of OPSEC things that you couldn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. So now they knew that they had an asset that they could actually trust. Yeah. Because you were part of the fucking team. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, let me ask you, did the Iraqis, how did they look at you? Were they like, oh, we're fucked. Now we can't, like, fuck around with these guys because... They have an insider? So I, f I think yes, because they knew I was in the know. Okay. So if they were to plan any fuckery or talk about any fuckery, because you're I, not know, only, I knew it. You're not only good with the language, but you know the culture. You know their, their mannerisms. They, you, you know how they work. Yeah. Right? So yeah. Y it's natural to you. You don't have to watch yeah. it. You just, you're absorbing everything that's going on. Yeah. And, and, and the Iraqis, uh, the Iraqi army, Iraqi police, and some of the civilians and stuff, they were also, they had they didn't know what to make of me. They thought I was some CIA operative, <laughs> counterterrorism, going to take them to Gitmo or a black My name's site. Jack Ryan. Yeah, exactly. So they, they didn't know what to make of me because right. they it, it, it never dawned on them of an American soldier speaking Arabic. Yeah. And at the time in 05, if my numbers are correct, the amount of actual service members, whether Marines, Navy, Army, Air Force, uh, Coast Guard, uh, there's only uh, there was only 3,500 Arabic speaking service members in total. In total, wow! And that's it. 3,500 out of how many people? Oh, you're talking. I mean, the Army alone is like 1.2 million, right? Well, there, was there or that many more. deployed? Um, I, I have no idea, but I do recall that. I mean, it had to have been at least a couple of hundred thousand, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 3,500 out of, wow. Man. Yeah. And and various positions, right, in but, the, throughout but, the military. But, well, yeah, various positions, right? And they yeah. can't be, a lot of them probably weren't boots on the ground, right? Yeah, most, uh, I mean, I don't know how many, I mean, I know in my AO, uh, which is, which was uh, area of, op it, it means area of operation, which me, which we, we had a vast area of operation. I knew that. From what I knew, I was the only soldier in that entire area that spoke Arabic. Talk about a fucking asset, man. Jesus Christ. So I became extremely busy. Valuable. As you can Im imagine. And, uh, oh, and I had a, uh, a reward uh, for my head. Oh, how much? $100,000, which wow. I was kind of pissed. I was like, come on, that should have been more Two, than that. 250 Yeah. yeah well, dude, I was thinking like $100 million. <laughs> well, Come on, look at this guy. Sorry, bro. I don't think I paid 100 <laughs> 
100 mil. 100 mil. I can do so, a lot with that. 100 so, grand, maybe we can. Uh. So, yeah, no. The, so so I, I remember through the grapevine and, and like, Intel reports or whatever, it came down that uh, – uh, translators, American soldiers spoke Arabic, whatever. Uh, Al Qaeda had a price on our head. Did, did they give you a name? It's like a cool fucking name, like American <sighs> pirate or fucking something. You know what I'm saying? No. So, so my my squad we were called the Spartans. Uh, so yeah. So uh, well, Praetorians and Spartans. But we'll we'll get into that as soon as uh, as soon as we get there with the uh, with the uh, uh, article. Yeah. Okay. Um, so keep, keep anyway, going. so let's let let me get back because I can go on forever <laughs> talking about this. <laughs> so uh, a couple of weeks later, um, I was given a new mission. I was assigned to the battalion commander. Uh, personal security detail. Yep. Um, the squad was called the Praetorians. Uh, they were named after their, an elite unit within the Roman army whose members served as the personal bodyguards of the Roman emperor. Uh, the battalion commander's call sign was Spartan 6. Uh, the, the FOB uh, was called uh, FOB Spartan, so he was in charge of yep. the FOB, essentially. Um, after my uh, deployment, I found out our call signs... Uh, were quite fitting, you know, because after thinking about it, we're like, you know, we were uh, we were a small unit, small squad of soldiers who traveled all over northern Iraq with a battalion com- commander who never slept, by the way. <laughs> uh, it was like, holy shit. And, and we conducted over 40,000 miles of combat patrols. Jesus Christ. He was one active, proactive battalion commander. He, Savage. He, well, he reminded me of, uh, if you remember, like Colonel Halmore, uh, we were soldiers, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, First in the battle, last to leave type of guy. Beast. You know, last to eat type of leader. Yeah. You know, made yep. sure all of us are are good, you know. A he, true leader. A true leader. I mean, I, I have yet to meet a uh, an, a leader like that in, in my lifetime right now. I have yet to meet another one. God bless him, man. What's because, his name? Uh, Colonel Dan McElroy. And uh, and he's, he know, you know, me and him, again, very close friends, and uh, we talk all the time. Um, Very we, cool. We've actually met, you know, met up a few times after. Uh, still to this day, you know, we'll visit each other and stuff like that. So, anyways, I reported to him. So this is my first meeting with the battalion commander. He was a little shorter than me, but he had command presence and a type of energy that you just wanted to run into battle with him. You just wanted to. Yep. And uh, later on, I'll send you some videos of his speeches. You'll probably want to get out, out of your patrol car and go fight something. And go fight something. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't do that. <laughs> well, it'd be good uh, before a call, but then. You know, <laughs> I mean, I have a hot up. call. Can you send me something? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, so, anyways, he, you know, uh, being a leader, you can, you know, he, he was also the type, one thing I learned from him being a leader that you can still talk to your subordinates as one of your own. Whoa! Right? Whoa! So, it, I mean, here's do the, as I say. Here's the battalion commander. Talking who, to you like fucking me and you. Like me and you, exactly. Me, man, we, we would sit down and play spades together. Right. Spades, cigars, whatever. That's and, who you, you go know, into battle with. Yeah. You know, uh, it, 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 it was like surreal to me um, because I've had battalion commanders that were complete assholes. Well, that's the thing, man. Somebody's going to be a dickhead to you. Even, I'm not trying to, to compare the two, but even here on the street. Yeah. Right? When a... When a when a boss, whether it be a sergeant or a lieutenant or a captain or whoever, are idiots, yeah. you don't want to fucking do anything for them. No. But oh. when they're awesome, you're like, I'll go into a fucking burning house with this guy. And, and here's the thing. Now, now it, it, awesome, yes, because, he, you know, he was a great leader. But here's the thing. He was he was also uh, firm but fair, right? So, right. So I've been yelled at by him a, a few times. Of course. All overseas. More, 90% of the time is because safety and all that shit yep. because he really cared. It wasn't, you know. Did you just throw up in your mouth a little bit? No. <laughs> I had I had some uh, food before I came because I had a good workout. Um, excuse me. So uh, so I uh, I uh, he went and um, wh- what I learned from him is to be that fair and partial leader and to be uh, one of the guys at the same time. Right. Where, like. I knew he was the battalion commander. He didn't need to tell me his rank. <laughs> you know, you know those leaders. I'm the sergeant. I, listen to I'm me. I'm the lieutenant. I'm the captain. I'm the chief. One of you get me a podium. Yeah, exactly. You know, where they like to hear themselves talk. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, and you know, there's no, there's no insubordination, right? right. Because this, dude, this, this commander knew his shit. 
knew the men. He knew every single one of us and under the, his command. And, and the men knew it. Yes. They knew that he wasn't a fucktard. No. Right? Like, you weren't going to fuck around. He was fair. Like, you're at war. Yeah. What better, how much better of a commander can you have? Yeah. He actually instituted uh, Friday night fights, so boxing matches. Really? Brilliant idea. Now, here's the thing, right? You're at war. Me and you, whatever. We get into a pissing match. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Let's take it out Friday night. You know night. what? Let's do it Friday night then. Instead of yeah. building it where yeah. one of us gets into a shooting, you know what I mean? Where it turns into a frat That That or you're, or you're turning a corner and you see each other and yeah. fucking now you're rolling around on the ground. Nobody exactly. knows what's going on. Exactly. Now we have the, the Now we the have setting. a venue. Now we have a venue. Yeah. We, will, we will box it out. Brilliant. Win, I, winner's winner, and, and that's it. And talk about letting out your aggression too. Could you imagine if we did that in policing? <laughs> I would like to. <laughs> but here's the thing. Um, one, I think the public who doesn't know any better would be like, oh my God, they're training to kill us. You know, like they, they, they wouldn't get that. You know, they wouldn't understand right. that aspect of, of, of the, 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 the mentality. Right. You know, it's, 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 it's unreal. So, so, you know, getting back to the article, you know, so... I met the Praetorians, um, the squad leader. He looked like he hasn't slept. Am I on the right page? Uh, Praetorians with Spartan Six. So go to the next one. I think there's a picture of us. Um, where are you? I met the Praetorian. No. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah, you're at the Praetorian? Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll put up the picture. Oh, okay, okay. So the Praetorians, um, so it's, uh, the title, yeah, there it is. Yep. So the Praetorians. Um, which that's us right there. I am at the far right at the bottom. Bottom right? Yep, right there. With the big scary gun? Dude, that's a M16, dude. Oh, the original M16? M16A4. Wow. That's what I, that's what I had. That thing was freaking, yeah. Was, Cannon. Yeah, it was, it was a good good weapon. Where, where are you guys here? So this was in Baghdad at the, uh, right under the Saddam swords, one of the sides. Oh, no you know, shit. Those cross swords that Okay, uh, now that I can saw. see it, yeah. So those helmets right there were from the Iran-Iraq war. Wow. Yeah, of the soldiers that died. Holy shit. Yeah. Yep, they were, are they like in the concrete? Yeah, and the they built it right into the concrete. <laughs> oh yep. man, those were the soldiers that were killed uh, during the Iran Iraq War. Jesus, um, I forgot for which side, whether it was Iran or Iraq, but th those helmets are, are soldiers that died. Um, wow, bro. So, so anyway, so we uh, again, I met the squad leader. Hardly slept. Like I could tell, he, he hasn't slept in weeks. You know, and uh, when you're in charge of a squad responsible for the well-being of the battalion commander, I mean, that's kind of a big deal. Right. Anything happens to that dude, <laughs> it's right. on you. Right. You know, and and he and he thing is though, he used to dr drive the squad leader crazy because there are times where we were doing like entries into into buildings and shit like that. He'd be my number two. What? I was like, what the? I was like, uh, seriously? Right, okay, sir. And and actually, uh, one of the it's speeches. Kind of a little pressure on well, you, too, right? Well, I, I, so I sent you, I'll, I'll send you a video that, you know, that uh, his going away speech to us after we were all done and everything. And uh, he told us that, uh, and you guys knew it, if any one of you ever pulled me out of a fight, I will kick your ass That's in badass. that, you know? So it was oh, like, man. you know, so so it, it was, it was, it was uh, quite. The experience, you know, working for him, yeah, and and with him, you know, and uh, so so squadly introduced me to the rest of the Praetorians as they were cleaning their weapons, uh, preparing for the next mission. All of them welcomed me as one of their own right away, uh, because here's the thing: I'm from a completely different unit, yep. going into another unit. They don't know who I am. I don't know who they are, but right away I was welcomed. Right, right away, you know. We all bleed green. Sure. You know, and, and that's one thing I loved about the military. It didn't matter where you came from, what color your skin. Uh, all brothers was, and sisters. Your religion. We all bleed green. We all have the same exact uh, mentality. The Like, you know, same missions. Um, uh, like, it, it, all of it. You know, all right. of it. So, so when, when <laughs> so uh, part of the thing with them is they had all, all sorts and manners of of uh, weaponry because we were assigned to the to the battalion commander. Okay. You know, we had two four nines, we had two uh, forties, fifty cal's, um, Jesus, uh, M fours, M sixteens, uh, just all kinds of weaponry. Um, 
AT4s, what are, which are the rocket launchers. Yeah. Um, and and it was it was pretty cool to be in a squad like that because those guys were all high speed. They were good people. They were good soldiers. They knew their shit, you know. And and they you know they've been under the command of the battalion commander for a little while uh, before I got there. You yeah. You're talking like a couple of months. So after a few minutes of getting to know each other, we were given our mission by the squad leader. I went back to my tent to prepare. I realized it was going to be an extremely busy time for me. <laughs> so I was also anxious because yeah. here's the thing. I mean, I'm 23 years old, and I had to ensure my situational awareness was 100% at all times. 11 men relied me to assess a situation, give them the information it needed so we could respond appropriately. Right. So I would go into these high level meetings with the battalion commander, with uh, various Iraqi tribes, Iraqi uh, mayors, leaders, whatever. And I would be the one translating. But at the same time, I also assessed the feel of the room. Right. You know, if, if uh, again, you knew the cultural aspects. Yeah. Of a lot so of these so if I felt something was off. Right. Uh, we had a uh, kind of code uh, word we would say. I'm not going to reveal yeah, yeah. it, but we had a code word we would say where they'll come in heavy. Yeah. You know, like, fuck, like, kind of like, you know. Uh, it's US, like an avalanche. Yeah, in, avalanche. In, yeah. Like, you know, president uh, sitting on the podium, something happens, right. and everyone swarms. You know, let's, it's kind of like let's that. Let's not give it up. No, no. Yeah. So, so, so it, 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 you know, it was kind of like that. So, so I also had to make sure I didn't give up any information about where yeah. we're going, what we're doing. And, and part of that might, uh, and, and information about me either. Because I still had family Your in family Lebanon. There, yeah. Which Lebanon, you know, it's freaking two hour flight probably to get there and from Iraq. I'm sure these motherfuckers were sniffing, dude. Oh yeah. They were yeah. like, Who is this guy? Yeah. They're 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 looking at everything about you, probably yep. your dialect, fucking. Your, well, they knew your they knew I was from uh, southern Lebanon just based on my dialect. Yep. You know, and and that it, it, that's the region. You know, it is what it is. So right? they're sniffing around, they're asking around. Yeah. Yeah. That's dangerous. And dude. and I ripped off my last name on my name tape. Yep. And I I had all the guys just call me by my first name, Iman. I said, don't even give my last name. Right. It's only Iman. Iman, Iman, Iman. Because Iman in the Middle East is a very common name, too. Okay. You know, it's kind of like John. John. You know, something like that. Uh, so so I just kept it at that. So, um, And it, it made me feel a little better that... Now I'm not, uh, I'm not so much of, or my family isn't so much of a target. I wasn't too right. concerned about myself. It's just more my family because I know I can take care of myself. Um, so it, while I was over there uh, meeting with, excuse me, meeting with the guys, we went out on our missions and some of our missions, man, you're talking a 14 hour convoy, like to go up to Mosul Jesus. and you're talking, you're just driving yeah. and man, you're talking, uh, in the heat, you got to stay aware, situationally aware. I was just going to say, you got ambushes. 14 hours, you're, you're looking fucking 360. Yeah. You're looking at everything, every little rock that seems fucking off. Your, mm -hmm. your ears are fucking perked. Yeah. Jesus yep. Christ. And, and you know, so so it was really nonstop. And, and it was like, I went there and and at the same time, though, I had issues when I was home. Yeah. Right? So... I was looked upon by certain members of the community as the enemy. I was called once. What do you mean? Why? Oh, you oh you joined the enemy. Traitor. Yeah, traitor. That's no that's, shit. Oh yeah, right, right here, right at home, in the in the good old U.S. of A. What? Yeah, that's that's the way they, they I was looked at because I deployed. You know, by I, people living in the United States. Yeah, enjoying the freedoms that they have. No offense to anybody that you know. Fuck them. Yeah. Well, Seriously? That's the way I felt. I mean, I at that point, I disconnected myself from so many members <laughs> of the community because, one, they, they showed their true colors, and, two, here's the thing. Whether you agreed with the war or not, everyone right. had their own own opinions about the wars. Right? Of course. Whatever. It, it is what it is. But here's the thing. I, I was given orders. Time to deploy. Yeah, what are you going to do? Time to go. Time to go do what we got to do. But you know what? One thing that's so true is the minute a bullet goes right by you or mortars hit or whatever, whatever you felt about the war or whatever. <laughs> out the window. It's out the window. Right. Now it's about you. Survival. To the guy to your left and to your right. right or the girl, the gal to your left, to your right. It didn't matter at that point. 
Um, so that's the, and and for people to uh, like it within my community to realize that or to understand that they will never, because again, even even here, they're still in that tribal mentality. You know, I, they, they I still get have it that because like even my culture is the same way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I get it, but. <sighs> Like it's disappointing to fucking hear that. Like you can't support. It's a was this family that we're talking about? Ver, uh, either close, family or close, close family. Like they can't support you. Yeah. No. I, what the I, fuck? Uh, when I went to boot camp, man, I was uh, basically on my own at boot camp. Um, got letters here and there, whatever. Yeah, but um, when I was at war, um, again, like like most soldiers, actually, we never told our families really where we were. Right, right. But they um, knew they had an they, idea. They had an idea, right. and and I went. You know, I, I I spoke to to my family every once in a while, but it was kind of like a, I don't know, kind of like almost. Hey, I'm just here. Yeah, I'm okay. All right, thanks. Bye. You know, it wasn't really nothing in depth. I was, uh, you know, I kind of so so my own. I've, I've kind of learned to develop uh, my own drive, my own uh, determination. Right. Well, you're mission oriented, right? You're yeah. going to, you're going to yeah. take care of the mission. You're yeah. going to take care of the men. Yep. You take care of you. Yep. You know, and you can't let those outside influences fucking nah. get in your head. <laughs> because here's the thing. The minute you let that stuff get into your head out there, that's when you die. Oh, exactly. That's when bad shit happens. Uh, you, you Frickin' you zig instead of zag, and you catch a bullet. It's it's the um, same here on the yeah. street, oh, yeah. right? Like, oh, you, yeah. you can't let anything get into your head that's not positive. If yeah. it's positive, let it be in your head, mm-hmm. right? Because even the positivity, let's get yeah. in the physiological aspect, it's dumping good chemicals, good yeah. hormones, and all that. Yeah. But in a war zone, Jesus. No, in a war zone, it, it was... it was. I mean, I remember there were times uh, in a war zone, and I was uh, kind of in a haze, right? You're kind of in that fog of war, fog. if you want to call it, uh, walking back to my tent, and I remember seeing uh, one of the garrison uh, sergeants. Garrison are ones, like, you know, they stay, they don't really go outside the wire. They, they have other functions, like whether it's yep. paperwork or whatever, and uh, and whatever they did. But as as I'm, I was walking by the sergeant, the sergeant was actually a female uh, sergeant uh, assigned to the battalion. Um, She walked by me, and uh, she saw I was kind of in that fog, right? Kind of just walking back lazily, if you want to call it, whatever. Yeah. Um, And she said to me, uh, hey, Sarge, keep your head up. And just that kind of snapped me out of it right away. Smacked you in the butt a little bit. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, you know, yeah, I got to be, keep my head up, you know. Because everybody, we're all victims to it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like you're always going to get victim to the bullshit. Yeah. It's always going to creep into your head, but sometimes you just need that yeah. little slap in the butt. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and just her saying that, I mean, I smiled and I said, Roger that, Saj. <laughs> and, you know, I, yeah. I, I continued on back to the tent. And, uh, and I mean, so, so with this article, I mean, uh, the reason I wrote it is one, to give a glimpse of what it was like when I first got to Iraq. Um, I have other articles. We'll get into those later on. Yeah, it says to be continued here. Yeah, too, right? it says to be continued because there's there's another part to this, which which is actually what I just kind of uh, went into is the whole oh you're you're the enemy, you know. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, so it goes more in depth into that. So we'll we'll leave that for for and the next, the next one. one. And that's on Havoc Journal, and too, that's, right? that is on Havoc Journal. You can just click the link and and you it goes right to to it. So. You know, it it, 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 me getting to Iraq, it was such a surreal moment um, after, again, I realized we're at war, <laughs> you know, right. after the mortars came down. But, you know, a few months in, those mortars didn't really matter anymore. It became... Second nature. It be, Well, it became kind of like... Uh, the constant. I'll, well, I'll never forget uh, going on leave, right? When, when I was getting ready to go on leave for my two weeks... Um, I went back. I went back to Camp Anaconda because that's where we leave to go to Kuwait. From Kuwait to wherever we chose yeah. to go, um, and we. Uh, so I remember laying in my tent, in in the tent, and kind of like the transient tent, if you want to call it, on base. And I'll never forget hearing the mortars sail over my tent, and me and a few guys were laying there. We kind of, and we heard the blast. Yeah, no biggie. We're like, yeah, it's it's far. So we, it's at we, least two hundred <laughs> fucking yards yeah. up. So we lay back to sleep. So yeah. again, you think about it like today, you know, yeah. you're like that's fucked up. Yeah, you know, like like there were times where me and the squad leader were doing our our briefing, mission briefing, right outside the gate, 
um, inside the gate, but we're like right there. Yeah. Um, you know, he's going through his binder of the latest Intel reports, stuff like that. And, and we're just going through it. And, you know, I'll, I'll never forget. I saw we, you know, a few mortars hit. <laughs> I don't know, again, like two, 300 yards away from us. Boom, boom, boom. No big deal. And we're just looking at it, and we're like, huh, that's interesting. And and the squad leader's like, well, I guess that's our cue to go, right? I'm like, yeah, I guess. And it was so nonchalant. You guys wanted to, like, five more minutes, and then yeah. we're out of here? Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it wasn't it wasn't anything, uh, anything no like. No biggie. Yeah, it, wasn't, it, it, it turned into more of a hassle because, oh, you're getting in the way of my fucking sleep, you know. <laughs> now I got to get right. up, and, yeah. and, you know, it is How what it is. How dare you, mortars. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and that's what, you know, again, that's like, I'm sure to, to, to veterans, they can understand it. Um, you know, yeah. listening um, to the civilians who who are listening that don't uh, understand it. it. It it's a different type of world. It's a different type of mentality. It's it's it, again. I, I hate how certain people like to kind of paint us as these savage Vikings or whatever. Even if Vikings. Although aren't being that a Viking savage. is pretty cool. Yeah, but but just you know, like no emotion right. type. Right. Shit. And, and you know as well as I do, the only reason why we get no emotion, if you want to call it that, is because of muscle memory. We get into that right. mode where we're doing entries, whatever. Yep. And to me, I equate it to be like, oh, I'm like as if watching a VR video yeah. game and just going through the motions. I'm not doing it. It's just my body doing it. It's a stillness of the mind. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's it's the muscle memory in your brain. The brain's a muscle. Yeah. Right? It's the muscle memory in your brain. It's just, it's sad that we have to get to that level. Yeah. Because you're going through all that experience. Yeah. It's sad that you as soldiers had to get to that level. Yeah. Where you're telling me the story, and that's the first thing that I'm thinking of is the muscle memory. You guys are just, you know, playing fuck fuck and, yeah. oh, there's another mortar, 200 yards. Yeah. You guys want to get out of here or whatnot. Like, I get it. You've been desensitized to it because yeah. it's war. Yeah. You're a soldier. But if fucking if if a transformer fucking blows on the street here the wrong way, <laughs> yeah, like people will shit their pants. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, it's not it's not like oh you need to be desensitized to it. We get it. That's part of living here in this country, yeah. right? You grew up with fucking bombs falling around you. Yeah, I one of I remember you were talking about it. Yeah, Liberia Civil War and Le Lebanese Civil War. Right. Yeah. So you grew up with it. Talk about being desensitized, but you went to war when you're an adult. And it still affected you. Yeah. Even though you were decent. Do you see what I'm trying to get? Yeah, at? yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, here's the thing. Mentally, physiologically, um, when you don't do it as often. So as a kid, yes, I grew right. up with it and all that. But then for years living here, not having to deal with it. Right. You kind of lose sense of what it was like. And then when I was thrusted back or I, you know, went right back to war. Yeah, I was kind of shook up at first. Sure. But then... I got used to it. But I mean, it's the same. It's this. I'm not saying it's the same. I'm, yeah. Again, I'm not comparing, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's like when you have a traumatic experience here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No matter how much used to it you are, no matter how tough you are, no matter how big the fucking wall is, something's going to get through. Yes. Right. And yes. you might be driving home one day and you might be like, oh, fuck, what just happened with this? What that? Absolutely. You know what I mean? Um, Actually, I, I'm going to go, uh, one of my buddies, uh, I actually wanted to talk about this one. He, yeah. he brought up a great, uh, great point. He's a fellow SWAT um, guy, and uh, he's on, on my team. And he, he actually posted something so profound to me um, that I'm like, you know what? He is 110% correct. Yep. Um, what he said was, in a normal person's lifetime, well, since they know him, but in, 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 in this country, in, in one lifetime or in the Western world, whatever, however you want to word it, a person may might experience one traumatic event, maybe two, maybe three, maybe, okay. you know, on the rare occasions. Yeah. Cops, us as cops, first responders, we, we might have to deal with two or three a week. Yep. Whether it, was, right. it, it, whether it was a, you know, baby's death or or a violent struggle, or um, a horrific car crash, right. or, you know, you know, multitude of things. So so when, when, when he posted that and said that, uh, I'm like, you know what, he's fucking right. So uh, he was going back into the dark sense of humor that we all have, you know, we're all, we're all pretty uh, <laughs> messed up uh, sense of humor, but 
that's our release. Right. Right. We don't mean anything by it. Right. But it's it's a way that we let go. Yeah, you could you could be at a murder scene and fucking you know, fuck around with your friend. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean I mean as long I, as it's not taking out of the out of the murders. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean I mean, you know, we've we've been to murder scenes and, and sudden deaths and stuff like that, and the next question out of my mouth is all right, what's for, what's for lunch? Yeah. <laughs> what's for dinner? Yeah. You guys want to order some pizzas while we before we get back? <laughs> but that's not to say I mean that's okay, we've been desensitized. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we use humor a yes. lot. But that's not to say that it won't affect you. Yes. The next day or a year from now. How many how many times have you talked to somebody and you're like, hey, what's wrong? And they're like, hey, remember that thing fucking two years ago? Yeah. And you're like, holy shit. And then you, you know, you get you talk about it or you get them the help or well, this and that. Here's, like here's, here's a true, I mean true for me, um, not so much at war. I mean, I had my issues there, but more recent, um, uh, maybe a few months ago. Right. Uh SWAT up and everything and, and I you know, I it it got close to um a shoot, a bad, shoot, yeah, you know, a bad day, a bad day, uh, for both me and the suspect. Um, one because I was forced to pull that trigger, which, yeah. you know, again, we talked about it about, you know, the worry of me losing my humanity again if 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 it comes to that point. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, like two three days later after that, on my way to training, um, my heart rate was freaking flying fast. Yeah. Because all of a sudden, all those emotions I felt hit you, hit me right at one fucking point. Yes, yeah, I one, get just it. Just random. I it was it. the most random thing. I was driving down uh, yep. the Mass Pike, and bam, I got hit. Yeah, you were probably li listening to fucking good music. Oh yeah, you're man. Thinking about fucking rainbows or some shit, and then it's just. <laughs> I, I don't mean rainbows, but, but you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. You were probably like, oh, nice car. Fucking yeah. bang. Oh, yeah. No, I, it hit me out of nowhere. Yeah. And any first responder or, or veteran military that, that says that's bullshit, I call your bullshit. Of course. Fucking admit it. Like, you know, I, I dealt with it. I you know, did my combat breathing, and I just kind of worked it out. Yeah. Uh, you know, made a couple phone calls to yeah. fellow friends and, and, and close uh, people that, you know, under, would understand these things. And... Moved right past along it. Right. But it happens. It's That's the reality of the job. And you need, you know, us as veterans, as, as first responders, we need to, quote, unquote, man up and just be like, all right, fuck, I'm getting hit hard on this one. Let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. Right. Don't fall into the trap. Yeah. Because that, that I, I feel, and I'm not a psychologist, but I feel like falling back into a trap is the most deadliest thing you could possibly do. You could. I mean, I've, I've talked to a lot of, uh, again, uh, Megan, Wellness for Warriors, right? Biggest, uh, the worst thing you can do is suppress it right. over and over right. and over and over again. And I get it. There are times where you're at work and you have to, okay, you know, ah, oh, fuck, I got, you know, we, we got to deal with the situation. My emotions can't get into it. Right. Right. I, can, I can't feel like this. You can file it in you a temporary file, file cabinet. Exactly. Right. Exactly. But when it comes up. Let it out. Let it out. Recognize it. And then deal with it. Right. I mean, we, we do that every single freaking day as, as cops. Well, think about it. We do it for other fucking people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> people we don't know. No, people we don't know that, that are experiencing a right. traumatic experience or whatever, right. and, and they end up walking down the middle of the road naked and, and throwing <laughs> shit around. And Sounds like my Friday night. <laughs> we, we talk them down off the ledge. I mean, how many Saturday times? Saturday night. Well, how many, how many times have, <laughs> have, have you talked people off the ledge? Yeah. Like you a know, thousand times. Yeah. I mean, you know, they, they had a bad day. Whatever trauma they experienced hit them hard. Yeah. And they didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. And we're fortunate enough to be able to recognize that and be able to deal with it where not a lot are able to, even 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 us or even me personally, I struggle at times. There are times I do sure. struggle no matter what because, you know what, we're human. Right. But think about it, right? If you can, on the street, no matter what's going on in your life, if you need to fucking talk someone off the ledge, yeah. you filed it away and you're take care, taking care of that human being. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So as long as you can realize that if something's going on in your head, file fucking everything else away. Yeah. File everything else away. Yep. Reach out. Yeah. Reach out to the Project Sapient. Reach out to the Wellness for Warriors. Yeah. Reach out to your fucking buddy. Yeah. Reach out to your sergeant. Reach out to somebody. And if they tell you to fuck off, call us. We'll call them. Yeah. I have no problem fucking calling well, here, anyone else. Here's the thing. You know, and I know, certain people in the department that you'll never call. Oh, I know. You know, but, yeah. but there are certain ones. Like, personally, I would call because... 
They'll get one, it. They get it. Two, uh, like for me as a, as a, as a, as a veteran, also their fu- their fellow veterans, yep. they get it even more. So you have brotherhood plus brotherhood. Yeah, exactly. Right. So it's like it's like a twofer for me. Yeah. Right. So and and veterans Giggity. only only talk to <laughs> yeah uh, veterans only uh, talk to each other in the end, just like right. cops only talk to each right. other. Right. Right. It's 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 a trust thing. It's it's something that, you know. Trust in this in this profession, whether it's you know me and my Praetorians and Spartans, and or me on my SWAT team, me and my my uh, plain clothes unit, you and your in your patrol and in, in SWAT. And Stop all reminding that. me. Um, <laughs> 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 but we all uh, we all have that certain uh, group of guys, couple, two or three, yeah, that we can call anytime because they get it. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. All these guys here in this picture. Yeah. You're still close with everybody? Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, one of them in that picture. Uh, kind of where I was getting at. Died. Yeah. Okay. Um, Sergeant Robert Carr. Um, later on, we learned that uh, this was, and, and I talk, I used to talk to him a, a, a lot, and, and he was like one of my closest friends. And uh, when I found out he, he actually passed away, we... Oh, it was it was devastating. Devastating, you know, because he was such a good guy, and I know his last deployment in Afghanistan was probably his worst one uh, that he ever did, and and he it, it was so bad. He you know he he lost guys, he lost a lot of guys, he lost uh, friends. Um, he he was struggling really bad, and and the way he died was um, a motorcycle crash, like kind of like you know I, I don't know what. Again, I don't know what it was exactly, and, and actually I have Fuck. it right here, his obituary. He died October 23rd, 2013, at age 46. You know, and he was, uh, you know, he was actually the battalion commander's driver. And he oh, really? had such a freaking funny sense of humor. It was, it was amazing to me. And uh, actually in the picture, where would he be? Uh, let me see. Hold on. You get so close, man. Uh, you haven't bought me dinner. Wait, stay right, stay right there. Stay right. <laughs> I think that's him right there. In the middle? Yeah, right there. I think that's him right there. Oh shit, man! Yeah, rest in peace. Yeah, you know, and and you know, again, his 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 so his awards was Bronze Star, uh, oh. our com, uh, Army Commendation with three oak leaf close clusters. Uh, Army Achievement One Oak Leaf Cluster, Meritorious Unit Citation, Army Superior Unit Award, Army uh, Good Conduct Medal with three bronze knots, National Defense Medal, Afghanistan Campaign Medal, Global War and Test. So you, you know, on and on. on and on and on. You know, the guy wow. guy was a war hero, and uh, wow. And you know, again, you know, rest in peace, Bobby. I, you're probably in a better place now. Uh, yeah, man. But uh, but anyways, so. That article was kind of my intro to uh, when I went to Iraq. I know we kind of segued into some more stuff, but sure. uh, but in the end, I mean, it kind of all came together um, anyways. But, uh, you know, just to our listeners, and uh, please go on Havoc Journal. I know uh, I have several articles about my time in Iraq. Um, feel free to read it. Read the other uh, veterans on there of their struggles, of their issues with uh, with being at war uh but uh yeah i mean you know so again if you guys have anything you want to tell us please project sapient 2020 at gmail.com we will do everything we can absolutely i mean thank you so much for sharing all this shit with us brother absolutely seriously absolutely it's it gives you a peek into the mindset of people like me who didn't who don't know you know what i mean yeah so, guys, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. We're on Facebook channels. We're on YouTube channels now. Um, our supporters, Havoc Journal, Gym Junkies, Vector Shields, Wellness for Warriors Live, Live Boston, uh, Wellness for Warriors Live, Live Boston 617.org. Guys, stay safe, stay sapient. Say bye, Ivan. See you guys.